Hello everyone. Some years ago someone asked to see my game collection and I don't have all of them here. Quite a few of them are put away to sell or to give back to my brother, but there, there are still quite a lot available. So we're going to go over them and talk about how I feel about them, just because. So over here on the very far left, in the Wii section, we have Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World, the sequel to the original Tales of Symphonia. I actually remember quite liking Dawn of the New World because I enjoyed the character dynamics and character development. I did not like the characters in the original Tales of Symphonia. I found they often acted really foolishly to move the plot forward, and I wasn't a fan of that. Uh, Flip's Twisted World is the next one. In that game, you literally flip the world around using the Wii Remote, and it's a 3D platformer, so it allowed for some very unique and fun pathfinding. But uh, all the lore was hidden behind collectibles, and I did not like that because I couldn't find them. Next, there's Pokepark 1 and 2. Pokepark 2 is far and away the better game, but I love them both. They're both minigame collection, 3D platformer collectathon things where you're collecting friends instead of regular collectibles. Pokepark 2 is basically Yakuza, but with Pokemon. It's crazy. I love it. Next is The Core Gang which is a 3D platformer very few people have heard about, and that's why I bought it. I haven't really played it yet, unfortunately. Then there's uh, Super Paper Mario. Super Paper Mario is definitely my favorite Paper Mario game, because it's all about love, and I love love. Seems to check out to me. I haven't really played this Tomb Raider game. Uh, Spectrobe's Origins is the final game in the Spectrobe series by Disney, and it was also the, the nail in the coffin for the series. Uh, Disney made some very poor business decisions regarding Spectrobes. The series was mildly successful on the DS, and they thought to make it more successful, they should bring it to the Wii with a bigger budget. Big, big mistake. Uh, they misunderstood why it was successful in the first place and rushed into a big project before the series had any real legs. They probably should have did what Fossil Fighters did and stuck on handhelds if they wanted to stick around a while. Real shame. Love the game, though. Uh, and then there's Spray. And the, it's another 3D platformer very few people have heard about. The primary reason I got Spray, though, is because uh, it's an acronym. It stands for Spirited Prince Ray, and you also spray stuff in it. That's the main mechanic. So that was too good to pass up. I haven't played much SimCity Creator. I don't remember a thing about Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, unfortunately. I have played a fair bit of Metal Slug Anthology. I can beat the uh, the first game with uh, within under 30 credits, which may not sound too impressive, but it is an old game. Keep in mind, it's an old arcade game, so it's tough. Uh, Dragon Quest Swords, I played many years ago, but then my brother sat on it and broke the disc, but now we have a working copy again. Two copies of Metroid Other M, one of them is my roommate's, one of them is mine. I haven't played it yet. I really want to because everyone everyone seems to dislike it. And I, I usually like things that other people dislike. By coincidence, I'm not being a contrarian on purpose or anything. Uh, Kirby Return to Dreamland played a lot, beat it multiple times. I don't like it as much as Star Allies, though. Disaster Day of Crisis is an import. Uh, it's, it's from a dear friend. I should really get around to modding my Wii U so I can actually play it. Uh, my Sims, My Sims Kingdom, My Sims Agents, and My Sims Sky Heroes, My Sims Party... I got all of these just because of how much I loved Kingdom. There's a half-finished My Sims Kingdom LP just sitting on one of my hard drives. Monster Mayhem Build in Battle, I don't remember anything about. Pirates vs. Ninjas Dodgeball is sort of a fighting game mixed with a character action game with a really goofy premise, and you can play as the Mushroom Man in it, so that's a huge positive. I don't remember anything about Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz. Uh, Ona Chanbara is a Muso-like, which is a which was an evolution of a simple series game of the same name, and it's actually quite good. I think it utilizes its minimal combat mechanics to great potential. I should really pick it up again. Soul Calibur Legends is a 3D uh, hack and slash game following Siegfried's story, where he tackles his personal demons. It does a it does go a bit light on it. It's It strays away from the darker elements of his story, which I wasn't... You know, I wish they would have kept those in, but it's still good for what it is. Dragon Blade Wrath of Fire is another 3D hack and slash from a third-person perspective with some character action elements. You use the Wii Remote to do many of the moves. I enjoyed it. I would have enjoyed it more without the, uh, without the Wii Remote, though. 
Barbie Horse Adventures is not actually Barbie Horse Adventures. Lego Indiana Jones is in this case, not not Barbie. I played quite a fair bit of Chocobo's Dungeon. I don't remember anything about it, though, unfortunately. I have not played Lego Star Wars 3. I want to. I've heard that there are strategy elements in it, and that, that, that intrigues me. Ghost Squad is a pretty enjoyable light gun game. I wouldn't say it's as good as LA Machine Guns, but I had a good time with it, and, you know, the Wii is, has no shortage of good light gun games. Deadly Creatures I bought to play with my brother, and we just never got around to it. Uh, the rest of the Wii games are up here. Skylanders, the uh, the original one, right there, yeah. Uh, I think it's great. It's a fun co-op top-down action RPG. Reminds me a lot of Gauntlet. It has a great personality. I love how wholesome it, and colorful it is. It's still one of the best-looking children's games, I think. Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, 100% of it. Not interested in doing that again. Probably not going to play it again. It was fun while it lasted. Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, my favorite Zelda game by far because of the story, and I really enjoyed the final boss. I thought it was incredibly engaging for what it was. SpongeBob SquarePants Truth or Square, the textbook definition of a linear 3D platformer. Nothing really wrong with it, nothing super great about it. Rygar, The Battle of Argus, is a remake of a PS2 game that I didn't know was a remake. I need to play the PS2 version sometime. Gormiti, co-op, top-down, action, platformer dealy, kind of inspired by the Lego games. It was all right. There's nothing remarkable or bad about it. Haven't played uh, Tomb Raider Anniversary, unfortunately. Mario Party 9 is far and away my favorite Mario Party game. It just felt a lot more fair than most of the others. Code Lyoko I played for a little bit, but not much, and I honestly don't remember anything about the franchise. Dewey's Adventure, we got pretty near to when we first got a Wii, and I just haven't played it yet. But I have played the Munchables through a few times. Uh, it's coming to hear it compared to Katamari Damacy. You, you go around eating things and getting bigger, and while that's similar in concept, the level design is more like a 3D platformer than Katamari Damacy. I just pronounced it twice in two different ways. Zack and Wiki I've heard amazing things about, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Tamagotchi Party On, probably my favorite video game party game. I think uh, people disliked it because you couldn't play the minigames together, but the underlying mechanics uh, of the board game section are where the fun really is. I barely played Endless Ocean, unfortunately. Mad World, I played through in one sitting to completion. Like, just sat in the back room of my old house and played it all the way through. And I had a blast, but now that Anarchy Reigns is out, there's just better takes on all of the characters from Mad World. Mad World's still good on its own, but I just play Anarchy Reigns now. And now let's move on to the Wii U. Over here on the far left we have Sonic Lost World, which is kind of a a marriage of the exploration-focused elements of 2D Sonic with the go-fast rhythm elements of 3D Sonic, and I think it's great. Probably my favorite 3D Sonic game. It's It's special. Rodeo the Sky Soldier is a complicated game by one of my favorite game designers, Yuji Naka. I haven't finished it, so I don't want to give my opinions on it yet. Disney Infinity 2.0, I've played a fairly a fairly large amount of. It's not my favorite Disney Infinity game, but it's, you know, you just want to hit some things, it's fun for that. Hyrule Warriors I made a few videos about on the channel. It's a little too casual for me in terms of Muso games, but it's still pretty fun, and I like the concept of the story. I haven't really played Yoshi's Woolly World. Uh, Minecraft on the Wii U is my preferred way to play Minecraft, just because it's on the Wii U and no other particular reason. I haven't really played Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Adventure Time Finn and Jake Investigations is a beat-em-up slash point-and-click game, and it's very strange, but that's fitting well with uh, Adventure Time in general, I suppose. Epic Mickey 2 is a 3D platformer collectathon with great co-op, with a focus on morality in its storytelling. Uh, basically, you can choose to either paint the world in and find creative solutions to help people, or destroy the world using thinner. And I, I loved it. Something that really bothered me about uh, the response to Epic Mickey 2 was how many journalists just lied about it. You can find so many journalists saying that you can only solve some of the problems with thinner. That's just objectively wrong. Outside of the tutorial, 
you never, ever, ever have to use thinner. You can solve every problem with paint. It's just about how creative you are in locating the solutions, which is the point of the game. You know, it's, it's to challenge you to find nonviolent solutions to the problems. And they just didn't do it, I guess. They just gave up. So that, that frustrates me. But Epic Mickey 2 itself is great. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, uh, I think it's a pretty average 3D platformer. Reminds me a lot of games from the PS2 and GameCube era. It's uh, it's in co-op too, that's a bonus. Uh, Barbie and Her Sister's Puppy Rescue is an endless game where you just go around a, a big open city collecting puppies and bringing them back and finding them new homes. It's fine, there's nothing really wrong with it. Cars 3 is a pretty good kart racer with a... Uh, with fun stunt mechanics to give you additional boost and some neat driving uh, capabilities that come straight from the Cars franchise, but uh, the rubber banding's pretty bad. Like, if you boost through the final lap, you just win. The, it's, it's, the rubber banding could be better. Skylanders Imaginators, I haven't played. I want to. I want to play every Skylanders game, but, you know, you have to get all the toys in the right spot and, you know... The Wonderful 101, I haven't played yet, unfortunately. I didn't like that the Switch demo forced you to play on easy mode through the first level. That made me mad. Um, Super Mario Maker, I did finish. You might not think it's possible to finish, but I, I completed all the Nintendo levels. So I count that as finished. Uh, let's move over to the Switch. On the Switch, we have Ugly Dolls and Imperfect Adventure, which is a terrible licensed game that understands nothing about what made the film great. We have Astral Chain, which my brother wanted me to play, and I just haven't gotten around to it. We have Skyward Sword HD, which, I mean, I always told people that you didn't need the motion controls and that it was perfectly perfectly capable of, like, you could always have mapped the controls to a controller. It, you always could have. And I was right, and I'm glad I was proven right, but I didn't like the other changes made to Skyward Sword HD. Fire Emblem Warriors, uh, I had a good time with. I mostly told all my allies to stay in the corner while I did everything, so I didn't engage with the strategy the way I think they wanted you to. Fitness Boxing destroyed my body, but I did use it to exercise. Super Mario Maker 2, I made a few videos about that on the channel. It's alright. Uh, like, it, it does what it's supposed to. Yoshi's Crafted World I haven't really played. Super Bomberman R, I think is great. Uh, Super Bomberman R proves that you didn't need Hudson to make a great Bomberman game, and I'm waiting for the sequel. Super Bomberman R2 win. Deadly Premonition 2 A Blessing in Disguise. Absolutely one of the most precious games to me. I hate I hate that the update changed some things about the narrative and gameplay, but I love the overall story. It's super cheesy and heartfelt, and I particularly enjoyed the antagonists and the way it explored York's character. Ginger Beyond the Crystal is another open-world 3D platformer. It's fine. There's nothing remarkable or terrible about it. It does have some graphical issues on the Switch in particular, though. Balan Wonderworld, probably my favorite 3D platformer of all time. It's not even close. Uh, and making that video on it and why I loved it felt really good. It felt good to get so much engagement from other people who were looking for the positivity, you know? And also a lot of people called me smart, so I like that too. Gigantosaurus the game, open world 3D co-op platformer heavily inspired by Mario Odyssey. It's good. It crashes sometimes on the Switch. I hope that's not the case on the other consoles. My Friend Peppa Pig, an insult to the Peppa Pig license. I don't like it. Crayola Scoot, uh, you ride around in scooters and paint the ground with your Crayola scooters. It's, it's funny. I'm not good at it, but you know. And up here is the GameCube. We have Dinotopia, a Sunstone Odyssey, which I don't know whether to call it an action RPG or a beat-em-up or what, but it's one of those, and it's a classic to me. Uh, Beyblade V-Force is a game you can beat in about 45 minutes if you know how to cheese the AI, and I do. Haunted Mansion has some really creative level design inspired by, well, Disney's Haunted Mansion. Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. I thought it was a fine 3D platformer. There were clear problems with it, like how the levels don't resemble the actual Bikini Bottom at all, but the exploration was good. Creature from the Krusty Krab. The best thing about Creature from the Krusty Krab is the incredible level variety. It cared a lot about being an entertaining game, and it shows. 
Uh, WWE Reckoning, that's just a wrestling game. Those are fine. And Hello Kitty Roller Rescue, uh, it slaps. A lot of people found my channel through my Roller Rescue LP, and I'm incredibly grateful for that. Alright, onto the PS2 games, we have Code of the Samurai, which is a hack and slash where you have to time your button presses incredibly particularly if you wish to succeed, or at least if you wish to be good at the game. And uh, I, I quite like that about it. Fightbox is a video game based on a reality television game show thing. I haven't played much of it. Muck and Shao Demon Sword, another hack and slash. It's pretty good. There's nothing that stands out to me in particular about the mechanics, but it uses its design very well. It's got a lot of fun challenges. Dark Native Apostle, basically Resident Evil mixed with Bomberman. Uh, that's on my channel. I know a few people found me because of that. Quantum of Solace 007, cover-based third-person shooter based on, you know, Quantum of Solace. And this, I'm not even going to pretend I can read that, but it's a simple series game. Uh, Kokoto Fishing Master, I got because of the weird title and weird character design on the front, uh, which, which you can't see here. One moment. I got because of the weird title and weird character design on the front, and I barely played it, and when I did play it, I felt like I did not understand at all what I was doing, so I should probably get back to that sometime. Sea Monsters, my second least favorite video game. It's a port of a Wii title, and the controls just don't work. Atelier, Atelier Iris 3 Grand Phantasm, one of the first JRPGs I ever 100%ed. I super loved the unique combat system, and I extra super loved the exploration mechanics of the dungeons and how it rewarded you based on how much you explored. The Adventures of Darwin I haven't really played, unfortunately. Savage Skies, a Dragonflight game that I played very briefly, should get back to that. Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings is a pretty fun adventure game that was clearly made for the Wii, I don't know why I have it on the PS2. Nightmare of Druaga, one of the first localized mystery dungeon games, and I'm not even sure if this one is uh, is a roguelike or not, but it, it is part of that series. Mace Griffin Bounty Hunter, supposedly a really good first-person shooter I just haven't gotten around to. Klonoa 2, uh, wonderful. Wonderful, creative, unique 2D platformer, with tons of challenges you won't see anywhere else. I recently played the first game, and I definitely like the first one more. But Klonoa 2 is probably objectively better, and I'm glad it's getting a remake so more people can play it. Uh, X-Squad. It's, uh, it's one of the earliest third-person shooters, and definitely a launch title on the PS2. I remember that much. It uh, It's basically a maze. A big maze about managing your resources. Which is not what most people would expect, probably. But I enjoyed it. Tribes Aerial Assault I played entirely in solo, and I had a great time outsmarting the AI. The Punisher, I've heard nothing but great things about, I just haven't gotten around to it. Dead to Rights, same deal, just haven't gotten around to it. Trigger Man, one of the worst third-person shooters I've played. It's not the worst, not by a long shot, but uh, it's it's not good at communicating what it wants you to do. And the stealth segments are particularly grueling. Pirates the Legend of Black Cat, I haven't really played, unfortunately. Duel Masters, we don't talk about Duel Masters. We don't, I don't want to talk about... It. Neopets, The Darkest Fairy. I've really wanted to get to this one because it, I love low budget adventure games. Ed Ed Neddy, The Misadventures, a 3D platformer. I didn't really like Ed Ed Neddy, but I mean, it's a 3D platformer. I gotta play it sometime. Prism, The Dark Unicorn. Yes, absolutely. It's got a unicorn in it. RTX Red Rock, a really fun adventure game about exploring, I mean, you can probably guess what planet you explore in RTX Red Rock. Um, Sky Odyssey, haven't played it, unfortunately. Treasure Planet, a really fun Jack and Daxter-inspired 3D platformer. There's almost nothing in it that isn't inspired by Jack and Daxter, but the level design is quite good, and it's reminiscent of Spyro in some places, even. Uh, the Herbs, Sims in the City, definitely the easiest Sims console game. You dress right, people love you. That's The Herbs. I haven't played the original Sims on console. I have played a bit of The Sims 2 Pets, but I, you know, I've just never gotten back to it. Scaler, I've played a few times. I think the strength of Scaler, it's a 3D platformer, is in its exploration mechanics. I don't know about, like, the overall game design, but the level design is pretty solid. 
Kia Dark Lineage I have because someone uh, on the channel asked me to play it. I think their name was Dude Fam and Friends, but they change their name sometimes. Outrun 2006 I haven't played, unfortunately. Uh, Stuntman. Uh, it, it's a game that requires exact precision. It's, it's a driving game where you go through these gauntlets of stunts, and you have to do them all practically perfectly to succeed. Driver 3... Basically the same thing as Stuntman, just without the stunts. Dark Cloud, uh, an action RPG dungeon crawling game mixed with a town builder. It's I, I quite like the presentation, the overarching story, the music, the general atmosphere, all of it. I got, I think, to the fourth kingdom before I stopped, just because, I mean, it's long. It's a long game. Digimon World Data Squad. It's a perfectly serviceable action RPG. It's it's alright. Nothing bad about it, really. Grolanzer Heritage of War. I played a lot as a child, but just never picked up again as an adult. I love the music, though. Magic Pinjel I haven't really played. I, I got it because I, I was a big fan of Graffiti Kingdom. Hurdy Gurdy. Uh, if you're watching this XYX Games, I'll get to it. I'll get to Hurdy Gurdy. Seek and Destroy, I haven't really played. Death by Degrees, I loved. Uh, it's got a lot of unique combat mechanics uh, that you wouldn't see again until Metal Gear Rising. I'm infatuated with a control scheme where you perform moves using the right stick. The story was phenomenal. Supremely underrated, Death by Degrees. Onamusha, Dawn of Dreams, I haven't really played, unfortunately. Beat down Fists of Vengeance. I have a Let's Play on my channel for that one. Uh, I mean, anything I could have said about it, I already said. Rise of the Kasai, haven't really played. Drakengard, definitely one of my favorite Musou games, and it was one of the first games that got me thinking artistically about the medium. It uses its genre to paint the kind of mindset someone would have to be in to engage in such repetitious, disgusting, ravenous violence. Like, the, the people in Drakengard are hateful, awful people who love killing and killing and more killing, and they just keep doing it. And the music is incredibly repetitive to really drive home how disgusting and, and blunt what you're doing is. Uh, I love almost everything about Drakengard. Asterix and Obelix? Obelix? One of those. Uh, this was gifted to me by Boogeyman, and it is quite enjoyable. Some parts of it remind me of a Musou game, other parts not so much, but uh, it's really hard to do it justice in short form. Just know that it's it's great, and uh, now that the sequels are remastered, you should pick those up if you can. Extermination. The writing in Extermination reminds me a little bit of a sweary game. A little bit. Soul Calibur 3. Uh, I really like the strategy mode in it. Spy Hunter I haven't played much. The Plan with a 3, I haven't played at all. Evergrace, a beautiful FromSoft game, has far and away my favorite video game soundtrack. Please listen to the Evergrace soundtrack. Uh, in particular, the tracks Howl or Sunbeam Streaming Through the Leaves. I love those. Sai... Hold on. Dai Sinriaku 7 Exceed Modern Military Tactics. I only own this because... Uh, the name. Ape Escape Pumped and Primed, pretty fun 3D platformer slash minigame collection. Played it with Nathan a few times. It's enjoyable. Haven Call of the King, I think, is Traveler's Tale's magnum opus, and I'm sad more people don't talk about it. Shadow Man's Second Coming, I played very briefly, and I'd love to play more someday. Full Metal Alchemist and The Broken Angel, one of my favorite action RPGs. A lot of people are quite bad at it because they, they don't understand the mechanics. I'll give you a hint. You want to transmute things. You want to use the alchemy. Do that more. SD Gundam Force Showdown is a surprisingly brutal beat-em-up roguelike. Like, it's shockingly hard for the target demographic of the show. Orphan Sign of Sorcery, I think, was a launch title. It's, it's a bit of a JRPG, a bit of an adventure game. Uh, I enjoyed it. Indiana Jones, Staff of the Emperor, and the Staff of the... It's something... It, it, look, Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb, I haven't really played. Metal Saga, I haven't really played, though I heard it has a variety of funny alternate endings. 
Shepherd's Crossing, I haven't really played, unfortunately. Same with Area 51. Same with Ring of Red. I did play a fair bit of Mark of Cry, and I was really impressed with the game design. Uh, up here, we have Monica Maya 2, one of my roommate Nathan's favorite JRPGs. That's why it's here. Tales of the Abyss, another one of my roommate Nathan's favorite JRPGs. That's why it's here. Can already tell you I love it way more than Tales of Symphonia. Warriors of Might and Magic, a uh, third-person action RPG. Nothing particularly special about it, but it's fun. Eternal Ring, probably my favorite FromSoft game for its atmosphere, and you get to play as a battle mage in it. Shifters is the sequel to Warriors of Might and Magic, and this one you get to transform into, into creatures, hence the name Shifters. And I, I like the atmosphere a bit more in this one. Disney... Uh, Pixar Monsters, Inc. Scare Island, also known as Scream Team in some regions. Just a really comfortable 3D platformer. All the levels are laid out very simply. They have giant landmarks, and it's just it's just a blast to play. It's very hard to feel frustrated playing. Next on to the 360, we have uh, Cameo Elements of Power, which I have to play. I just had to try it. Planet 51. I watched the movie Planet 51. It's a bit of a satire on... North American 50s culture, and it's all right. You know, it makes commentary on xenophobia, it being an alien movie and all that. It's cool. Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, one of my favorite 3D platformers. I know it's not good, that doesn't matter. Ride to Hell, same deal. One of my favorite beat em up slash third person shooters. I know it's not good, that doesn't matter. Ninja Blade, just haven't played yet. Section 8 has a bit of a story to it. Uh, I don't know what Section 8 is. It's one of the few games I didn't recognize when I went into the local game store. So I had to I had to get it. I still don't know what it is. Gears of War 2, one of the friendliest third-person shooters that might sound weird, but trust me, it's the game design is very friendly. It wants you to succeed. Space Chimps, based on the film Space Chimps. Uh, it's got quite a bit of level variety. The level variety is excellent, which is the standout feature, but the combat isn't bad either for how simple it is. And I think that's it for everything on this shelf. We have the PS4 games, starting with Ben 10, which is a pretty chill combo-focused beat-em-up for kids. It even got some decent reviews. Ukulele, I loved Ukulele. A lot of people did not, because it's, you know, it's, it's not Banjo-Kazooie, but I didn't like Banjo-Kazooie. Monkey King Heroes Back, I know it's a 3D beat-em-up, don't know much else about it. Valkyria Revolution, I loved. I thought it was a unique blend of beat-em-up and strategy, and I couldn't get enough of the story. Uh, Disney and Pixar, the incredible Lego, the Incredibles, basically Marvel superheroes Lego, but better. Lego World's one of my favorite games. It's just a creative sandbox where you don't have to be creative yourself to engage with it and have a good time. Lego Dimensions has some incredible boss fights. That's the outstanding feature of that game. Mighty Number no. Nine. <sighs> I think Mighty Number no. 9 was a pretty solid 2D action platformer that took Mega Man in a new and exciting direction that simultaneously paid uh, paid homage to its past. I thought it was good. Putty Squad. I played a fair bit when I first got it, but I don't really remember much about it. Watch Dogs, I really liked because of its morally ambiguous protagonist. Skylanders Swap Force, my favorite Skylanders game so far. It really expands on the character depth, the environments are gorgeous, and the boss fights are just so bombastic. Firefighters, the simulation, you play as a firefighter in it. Road Rage, I pre-ordered. I actually got it for $1 because uh, the pre-order got cancelled and Walmart refunded me all of it except for a cent, but the game still came in anyway. Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, I think is a perfectly serviceable remaster of Battle for Bikini Bottom uh, there are some things that are different about it that sh that shouldn't have been changed, but the core experience is the same, and it still feels good. I really haven't played Godzilla on the PS4 yet. Uh, Yonder, a non-violent video game where you just go around helping people. It's pretty chill. Ratchet and Clank on the PS4. Uh, symptomatic of how soft Ratchet and Clank has become. It used to be a super edgy series with a lot of... Uh, a lot of charm to it, and now I just, it's just kind of generic. I don't know, the game is fine, but the story isn't. Alakine's Gun, 
Uh, it's a Hitman style stealth game that I had a blast playing and breaking. Uh, I don't know. See, I don't even. I don't even think it's fair to say I did break the AI. The AI is just dumb on purpose. Lego Ninjago, uh, a Lego game, very similar to others, but it has a heavy combat focus. And even though the combat can be cheesed easily, I, I enjoyed what set it apart. The crew, I love the crew. Fun fact about the crew. Even though the case and Ubisoft will both tell you that it's online only and that that you have to play with other players to play it, that's a lie. Because this is on the PS4, and I don't have PlayStation Plus, and I can still play it. So if multiplayer was really essential to the experience, I would have to buy PlayStation Plus to play it. All the crew does is check with a central server, and if it can't reach the central server, you can't play it. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. There's no reason for the crew to be online only, and when it dies, Ubisoft will be murderers of culture. Arcania is an action RPG I've played a few times, most recently with my roommate Nathan, and it's been a blast every time. Devious Dungeon, action RPG roguelike that's very simple, but I, I, played, the, I played it so much just because of, you know, you go into a dungeon, you beat a dragon, you save the day. That's it. It's simple fun. The Lego Movie 2 video game. The Lego Movie 2 is my favorite film, by far. The Lego Movie 2 video game, it's alright. It's, it's not to be compared with the film. It's okay, though. Uh, I really like the open world focus in it. And its heart's in the right place. Tales of Berseria, Nate really loves. I haven't played it. Iron Man 2, I... I mean... I... Anyway... Star Wars The Clone Wars Republic Heroes. Very similar to Lego games, but with more of a combat focus. And uh, it's got a unique scoring system. It, it doesn't run very well, so it's probably not going to win anyone over. But it, it, I'll, I'll, play it some, I'll play the rest of it someday. The original Iron Man game on the PlayStation 3. One of my favorite games. Like, in my top five still. It's basic... It, you know the Iron Man movie and how great it is? This is better than that. And it's better than that because it uses its medium to artistically demonstrate the struggles of being a hero. Like, what being a hero is actually like. The sacrifices you have to make. And how the Iron Man suit would actually control. It's, it's so good. And I'm super disappointed at the critical reception to it. Starhawk. I haven't played, but I know it's a third-person shooter. Dark Sector, I haven't played, but I know it's a third-person shooter. God of War 3, I don't know why I own God of War 3. I've never really had an interest in God of War. Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends, I played a fair bit of, some with friends, some without. Um, my favorite feature of the game is the Ambition Mode, where you rebuild uh, the Tongkitai, which is a giant fortress, uh, and you have to sate the needs of the townspeople and recruit soldiers, and it's just a ton of fun. Spider-Man 3 is an incredibly underrated beat-em-up that tried to do something unique and new with Spider-Man as, as a character and his mechanics. Uh, I like it a lot more than the Arkham-style Spider-Man games. Like, a whole lot more. Unlike those, Spider-Man 3 actually felt unique. Uh, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to get it out, and I can tell you it's probably related to Sengoku Basara, or it's Max Anarchy. I was wrong. It's Gundam Breaker. Gundam Breaker is a pretty fun action RPG where you uh, complete missions as a tiny toy Gundam, and you can customize your toy Gundam by putting Gundam parts on it, and it's it's just fun. You don't really need to understand Japanese to play it. Uh, one of them got translated, but I didn't like the storyline in the one that got translated. All right, what's next? Uh, X-Blades. Action RPG with tons and tons of grinding, but the core mechanics are pretty fun. Fist of the North Star, Ken's Rage, one of the Let's Plays I am by far the proudest of, introduced a lot of people to the finer nuances of that game, and it's just a great licensed game in general. It's hard to ask for a better game for your license than this. Uh, this thing, th this this one, that you probably can't even tell what you're looking at, that's, that's Clash of the Titans, which is an action RPG character action game with uh, some soul-stealing mechanics, just cuz. Perseus can do that just because. 
Oh boy. Um, okay, so I can tell you right now this one that says multi raid two. This is Strike Force Dynasty Warriors Strike Force two HD version. But but the one next to it, I don't know. So one moment. Common Rider Bat Ride War, an absolutely fantastic Muso game on par with Sengoku Basara three. Uh, I, I made an initial game and uh, an initial game analysis video about this that was incorrect, and then I I made a retraction and then a second retraction. Uh, it's a great game with tons of mechanical depth. Afro Samurai. Uh, it's it's a pretty fun beat 'em up with some. Like, it's been so long since I played it, I don't want to accidentally just say something blatantly wrong. I remember it having incredibly challenging combat and some unique mechanics for finishers, and it has a different ending than the anime. I do remember that. This is Uncharted 3. I can tell because there's a crate and a hand on the crate. It's Uncharted 3 for sure. Uh, Dynasty Warriors Gundam, one of the earliest Musou games I played. I also made a Let's Play of this one. Anything I could say, I've, I've already said about it. Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z. I love the edgy humor in Yaiba. I love the gameplay in Yaiba. I miss edgy humor. Rise of the Argonauts on the PS3. Um, it's I haven't played it. I know for sure it's a, it's a hack and slash. Trinity Souls of Zil Ol is made by Omega Force, the folks who regularly make the Musou games. And uh, it's like... Hey, what if we make an action RPG instead? X-Men Destiny beat him up with some action RPG trappings that I really loved. Uh, there's nothing, like, particularly outstanding about it, but I love the powers and their, uh, their different art styles and capabilities. I don't want to talk about Nier. There's too much to say. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tenkaichi is super funny. It's got a very chance-based combat system, but the presentation is outstanding, at least. Call of Juarez, Bound in Blood, not sure why I own it, haven't played it. Venetica, action RPG from Deck 13, the same folks who made The Surge, and I think Lord of the Titans, and Blood Knights. I've played Blood Knights, thoroughly enjoyed it, I look forward to playing Venetica. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Arkham-styled Spider-Man game. Very large emphasis on stealth, I enjoyed it. Um, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, back when the Lego games were 3D platformers instead of whatever they are now. Uh, Lair. Dragonflight game. Haven't played it. Positive it's great. Don't care. Like, I'm just, I'm just sure when I do play it, it's going to turn out to be great. I'm super positive. The Amazing Spider-Man 1, less Arkham styled, even more of a stealth focus. Uh, it's been a long time since I played it, though. Lego Batman 2, the first Lego game that I think really tried to wow people with its presentation, and it did it did a pretty good job. There's even a film based on uh, Lego Batman 2. It's not Lego Batman the movie, it's a different film. This thing with the red lines, that's Syndicate, haven't played it. Silent Hill Downpour, favorite Silent Hill game, absolutely without question for its atmosphere and protagonist. Remember Me, woefully underrated beat-em-up. Uh, really sad how that one went down. Max Anarchy slash Anarchy Reigns, another one of the Let's Plays I'm proudest of. Uh, anything I could say, I've already said about it. Hellboy The Science of Evil, my very first Let's Play. Kind of rough around the edges, but the way the dialogue is written is so poetic, and that's still my favorite thing about it. Golden Axe Beast Rider, not a bad game. It's not. Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2, haven't played it. Sonic Generations, I liked it. I didn't like it as much as the games before and after it, but I liked it. Prince of Persia 2008, still one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, I've had several people tell me my Let's Play of Prince of Persia is the ideal way to experience the game. That's incredibly flattering. Uh, this is definitely a Ratchet and Clank game, this one right here with the $50 sticker. <sighs> Probably a crack in time, because... Yeah, we're going to go with that. The Cursed Crusade, another one of my favorite games. It's not nearly as good as the other games that are in my favorites, but it has a lot of heart. It's basically an anime retelling of the Fourth Crusade. Ratchet and Clank Full Frontal Assault, back when it, uh, back when Insomniac was allowed to experiment, I missed that. 
Full Frontal Assault is great. I pick it up just to play with my brother or friends, and we, we blow through the campaign in co-op. Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories. Sorry, episodes from Liberty City. Liberty City Stories is a very different thing. I haven't played much of it. Stuntman Ignition. Like the original Stuntman, but easier. What is... What am I looking at here? What... What is this just black void of a case I'm looking at one moment? Turns out it's White Knight Chronicles is what that was. That's White Knight Chronicles. I love the original White Knight Chronicles. I hate what the redone version uh, that, that comes bundled with 2 did to it. They made the game easier. They took away so much of the strategy and original depth. Like, yeah, the lighting's improved and it's more likely to reach its target demographic, but they took out so much of the character. The Born Conspiracy, super underrated third-person sh shooter slash beat -em up It's really challenging. The combat is phenomenal, and people who are bad at the combat just don't understand beat -em ups I have to say that a lot. I'm not meaning to gatekeep here. I just think they should try better to analyze the game design. Rune Factory Tides of Destiny. Haven't played it. Really want to. Fairy Fencer F. Compile Hearts Magnum Opus. Like, it turns out they could always have written good characters and good stories. It's just they didn't really feel like it most of the time. But with Fairy Fencer F, they knocked it out of the park. Toy Story 3. Really creative sandbox open world 3D platformer. Uh, it, it was the basis for Disney Infinity, basically. Castlevania Lords of Shadow Collection. Haven't played the original Lords of Shadow. Have played, uh, what's it called, Mirror of Fate. I have played that to completion, and I loved it. It's so another Ratchet and Clank. Either either Crack in Time or Full... Or no, no, it's either Crack in Time or Tools of Destruction. This one's probably Tools of Destruction because the sky is a lot cheerier. The Simpsons game. There have already been video essays by now about why the Simpsons game is phenomenal. But it is. Uh, it makes so much commentary on uh, the video games industry and uh, video game design. And on top of that, it's just a... It's just a really great thing to do with the Simpsons license. It understands their characters so well. XCOM Enemy Unknown I got when it was new and just haven't played it. I got it because the gameplay looked like Future Tactics or Worms, which we don't need to talk about that, uh, about how I thought that. Dragon Ball Xenoverse haven't really played it, unfortunately. Bakugan, I've played some of it. But I, I couldn't engage with the mechanics the way I wanted to, so I stopped until I could give it more attention. Fallout 3, I haven't really played. Uh, what is... Oh, okay. The red label helps out. That's Little Big Planet, the original one. And this... Yeah, Little Big Planet carding is right next to it. And right next to that is Damnation. I already made a video about Damnation. It was fun. Uh, it's very flawed. Uh, this white case is absolutely Genji Days of the Blade. I loved the original Genji, Genji played it to death. Haven't played the PS3 version in some time. And this incredibly dark case is Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. Super underrated third-person shooter that tried something new and different with its license, and people didn't like it for it, which is always a shame. Mindjack, one of my favorite third-person shooters with a unique mindjacking mechanic that really opens strategic capabilities in combat. It's got some action RPG elements that are unfortunate, though. Defiance, probably dead by now. I'm going to put that in my PS3 later today. Army of Two, uh, the essential co-op third-person shooter experience, but it also works perfectly fine in single-player because you can easily instruct your AI buddy to draw aggro or whatever. That's an Uncharted game, this green-looking case, probably the original Uncharted. Definitely an Uncharted game. Sleeping Dogs. I, there's so much to say about Sleeping Dogs, but the primary thing is that, that the protagonist is excellent, right? That's like the, the takeaway from Sleeping Dogs. Uh, Fracture. You can shape the environment in Fracture. It's a third-person shooter. You can shape it with a gun that raises and lowers the terrain, and that allows for some really creative possibilities. A couple Lego games on the PS Vita, Lego Avengers, and Lego Batman 3. And over here... Space Marines, third-person shooter that I played a fair bit of but don't really remember, and Never Dead. One of the most creative third-person shooters has a totally unique concept where you're just plain immortal, and the primary way you kill enemies is through physics objects, interactions, 
A lot of people did not enjoy it. I did, though. Uh, and the Starshine Legacy games. There they are. And now it's time for the Beautiful Joe anime series. One of my favorite animated series. Uh, it's pretty high up there. I need to rewatch the whole thing sometime. I love it so much more than the games. Beautiful Joe, the animated series, the anime, whatever you want to call it, is about life. It's about adversity. It's about what it takes to get through life. And Beautiful Joe's answer to that is you got to be chill. You got to flow. You got to vibe with it. Everything can be overcome if you're fluid, you know? You just you just you just slide right on through. You just just work your way around or through the obstacles, flow into and out of every crevasse. There's nothing you can't handle as long as you're chill and you're being true to yourself. In case you're wondering where all the pony stuff and the big O stuff went, it's in this drawer right here, right next to my desk, just so it's always nearby. Uh, that on top of the My Little Pony stack is the Japanese Blu-ray release, which contains a selection of episodes from the first two seasons. If you don't want to digitally download My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, this is the best possible quality you can get the episodes in, because otherwise, the only physical media is DVDs. And I've already discussed in my video about the Big O, how, how great the Blu-ray quality for the Big O is. And over here we have some games that I've had sitting out because they're co-op games that I might or might not consider action RPGs to play with my roommate Nathan later. Justice League Heroes is definitely one. McFarlane's Evil Prophecy. Yeah, yeah, I'd call it one. Fable 3 for sure. Diablo 3, obviously. But Dragon Ball Z Sagas, I'm not sure. It has some RPG mechanics, but those are like the worst part of the experience. And Fairy Tale Fights, I just don't remember well enough. But yeah, that's uh, that's all the ones that I have out uh, that I'm not, that I don't have back at my old house or am giving back to my brother or planning to sell.